I am David Mieder from the Danish Research Center for Magnetic Resonance in Copenhagen, where I and Olli Hume, in collaboration with the LML, where we test ergodicity economics as a decision theory experimentally. And the aim of today's talk is to present our plans to test EE as a theory of decision making under risk, but also to solicit constructive feedback from you, the audience, in preparation for our pre registration. The roadmap of the talk is that I first want to discuss a bit how EE constrains utility according to dynamics that agents are facing. I want to summarize our previous experiment and the next set questions that have arisen since and the adjustments that we would like to make. I want to tell you about how we think about testing at multiple scales and how we want to generalize to new dynamics, how we want to integrate behavior and neuroimaging data, and I want to end with an appeal for adversarial collaboration. Now, how does EE constrain utility functions according to dynamics? So when you're confronted with a monetary decision, some gamble, first you have to find out what is the dynamic process behind the potential changes in wealth that I'm facing. So when I've figured out the dynamic, I need to find the wealth transformation that where the changes are ergodic. And I then compute the expected value of changes in, the, in this transformed variable. And if I then maximize this, I maximize my time average growth rate of wealth. You can express this decision procedure just equivalently in terms of utility functions where you specify your dynamic and then instead of calling it a wealth transformation, you would say you find your utility function whose changes are ergodic you compute your expected value of changes in utility and you maximize your expected utility. Just the same thing, different wording. Now, for example, if you have some wealth X at a point T and then you experience additive growth factors at some time points, then it's an additive dynamic and you should have a linear utility function or a linear wealth transformation so that you then compute the expected value in just the change in wealth and maximize this. However, if you have some other dynamic, for example, a multiplicative one is the one that Alex previously introduced for the coin toss example. What you then should do is use the logarithmic utility function or wealth transformation and then compute the expected value of changes in the logarithm of wealth change and then maximize your expected utility accordingly. And in our first experiment, we asked precisely this, is this what people do? So in our previous experiment, um, very shortly summarized, we endowed subjects with lots of money, a thousand krona, which is about 165 US dollars. And then we let them learn the dynamic dynamical effects of different stimuli on their wealth. So they would lie in the scanner and just watch nine different stimuli being shown repeatedly. And whenever they saw one of these stimuli, something would, would happen to their wealth. So one stimulus might always uh, increase their wealth and another one might decrease it and so on. And after this almost one hour of learning, they would have some end wealth, some new wealth, and then we, they would go on to the active session where they had to make decisions between gambles that were comprised of those uh, stimuli. So it was, do you prefer the gamble on the left or on the right side? Each of them would be a 50-50 coin toss-like gamble. Would you prefer the one in the top or the one, uh, a 50% chance of the one in the top or the one in the bottom being realized? And would you then prefer the 50-50 chance between the two on the left or the one, the two on the right. Importantly, people came twice on two separate days and we manipulated the ergodicity of wealth changes and switched between additive and multiplicative dynamics on the two days. So on one day, one stimulus might always add, for example, a hundred krona or another one would uh, subtract 80 krona and on the multiplicative day, one stimulus could multiply with 1.3 and a different one maybe multiplied with 0 0.8. We then estimated parameters of utility models fitting utility models to their choice data and performed model comparison. 
Now to briefly summarize the results. So we had these two different dynamics and we used an isoelastic utility function that we fit to the data where the risk aversion parameter eta, if it is zero, that means that you have a linear utility and if it is one, it is logarithmic utility. And what we then found is that indeed in the additive day, as you can see in the blue distribution, the value is centered around something close to zero. And on the multiplicative day, the values, the risk aversion parameter was distributed around close to one. So these risk aversion parameters are close to those that would be predicted by EE. And when we then performed a Bayesian model comparison, this also revealed strong evidence in favor of EE compared to static models such as isoelastic utility or prospect theory. So these results led to some new questions. So for example, do the results replicate? We only tested this in 18 participants. Will it generalize outside of the lab? Will it generalize over other wealth dynamics? Can time optimality be learned via experience? And of interest for us at the Neuroscience Center, does the brain's reward system compute time average growth rates? So we also want to adjust future studies to criticisms that we have received. One of the most often mentioned one was that we have a small sample size. So we really want to replicate our results over several scales of both population, but also time scales. We want to uh, use, we have heard that for dynamic games, we also must test dynamic models and we are engaged in an adversarial collaboration to build such dynamic models and then also pre-register them. Uh, house money is a validity problem and we would actually like to pre-endow this amount uh, even further back in time so that participants really feel like it is their money when they come and actually perform the experiment and it's not just a nice add-on that they have received just half an hour ago. Um, people have argued that uh, the partial and hidden realization of outcomes generates an ambiguity confound. So that means when we, after they had made all the decisions, we actually never, for each decision between the gambles, we never realized them. We never showed which one was the one that uh, then was actually realized on their wealth. But what we instead did was when they finished the experiment, we randomly realized 10 of the chosen gambles and that might generate an ambiguity confound. So we would like to both test a full, trans fully transparent realization of every single gamble, but maybe also to just to test what happens when we only realize one of one single gamble amongst those that they have chosen. We want to replicate our findings, but we also would, would like to generalize over new dynamics. And so we have these two dynamics, as I've told you before. And what we would be interested in would be to say, if we use a dynamic where exponential utility then uh, renders wealth changes ergodic again, what happens? So what we would like to see is that when we confront the same subject with these three changing dynamics, we would like to see whether the subject then actually changes from risk neutral linear utility to risk aversion in the multiplicative session, so the red shape, and whether we can then see that the same subject switches to being risk seeking in the case of the exponential utility function. So if we uh, look at the data we have uh, acquired so far, we then similarly would uh, see whether, as EE would predict, whether in the expected utility, uh, exponential utility case, the values, risk aversion values are centered around minus one. That would be strong evidence in favor of EE. Uh, we also want to test at multiple scales. At the micro scale, we would like to test about five participants over a long time span, over several weeks, where we could explore different designs and different dynamics. So it would be long-term repetitions effect we would be able to look at, 
This would really put an emphasis on the robustness of the phenomena that we are observing. We could in interrogate learning dynamics and also the neural dynamics because all of this would be happening inside the MR scanner. It would allow us to pilot different things for larger scale studies. And these data we would then consider more of more something like case studies. We would again use large incentives and it would be both semi-exploratory but also partially pre-registered. With this approach, we would really like to challenge the criticism or the widespread belief that somehow a large N, many participants with a small number of trials somehow are superior because they have large power. And we do not actually think that that is the case, that you can have small N with a lot of data per participant and that that is also very valuable data. Um, but we also want to test at a MISO scale, again, in the MR scanner, about 100 participants over six hours, two hours per dynamic, with, of course, breaks in between that would come in on multiple days. We would want to test the three dynamics I just mentioned. Uh, this would allow us to really use random effects models to be able to see whether variability is between subjects and what is within a subject. Uh, it would allow us inference to wider population. We could again use large incentives and this would then be really confirmatory and fully pre-registered both the code and the hypotheses. At the macro scale, we would then like to develop an app based game where you can play the same experiment, but for points. We would also like to uh, use a mechanical Turk players playing this game for some small monetary incentives. There we would really then put the emphasis on inferring population level distributions and generalize to outside the lab. This again would be semi-exploratory, but also partially pre-registered. And it would be a platform that can be reused for exploring new dynamics and other variants and uh, you know test small differences and whether small differences lead to changes in behavior. We have an interest in neuroimaging. We are interested in the brain. So we want to test people in the scanner. And um, this actually also really um, is of interest for the decision theory, because then we not only have decision data, behavioral data that we can fit our models to, but we also have data from our uh, dopaminergic midbrain, the reward system that we also know to um, code utility. And we can then not only ask whether humans optimize time averages behaviorally, but also whether the midbrain computes time averages and not only ensemble averages, which has never been shown before. So we can ask whether both modalities of data support the same model. I want to end with really um, making a case for adversarial collaboration for this project. Critics have argued that we should test dynamic models, multi-period utility theory or dynamic versions of prospect theory. Uh, here we want to really shout out to our first adversarial collaborator, Adam Goldstein, who made this point of critique and we are working with him to see how we can implement this in our experiments. Uh, it's a bit of a headache for us because we think that multi-period models are cognitively and computationally really implausible for our specific game. It just, you can't compute so much into the future. And under minimal cognitive constraints, the predictions of dynamic and static models converge closely. Uh, but it would be convincing to explicitly test those dynamic models. So we really solicit collaboration with anyone that has expertise in such models or indeed any other alternative model that could uh, be a good candidate competing against EE and other utility theories. All of the models would be pre-registered and the code that we would use to analyze it will also be pre-registered before we even start collecting data. And it will of, of course also be openly available. And with this, I just want to end by thanking the Novo Nordisk Fund. They have recently provided us the funding to actually perform those experiments. Thank you.